Souvenirs from Sweden. That's the title of this film. And one of the main characters in it happens to be me. I've been living in Sweden for the past year or so. Managed to get around. Quite a bit. Saw quite a lot of places. Quite a lot of people. But the day comes when you have to move on. You get, well, a little sentimental and feel it mightn't be a bad idea if you could find some well, little thing to remind you, sort of symbolize what you'd left behind. Oh, I beg your pardon. Perhaps I should introduce myself. My name is Fenton, Harry Fenton. But don't let's be so formal. Just call me Harry. 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 I wonder whether anybody's going to... Jag kommer strax. Hmm. Now I wonder. Of course there's so much to choose from. Lapland, for instance, up in the far north, beyond the Arctic Circle. Amazing people, the way they manage to get everything, food, clothing, warmth, shelter, and even wealth, I'm told, from their vast herds of reindeer. Or perhaps something from the opposite end of Sweden almost a thousand miles further south, Skona. Roast goose and thick brown gravy. Who could ever forget? Skona is the place where they produce so much food, they call it the nation's breadbasket. Then, of course, there was the archipelago on the west coast. Not forgetting the archipelago on the east coast. fine textiles and the superb femininity of the Swedish woman, almost unique. As proud and confident as a goddess, tall and slim, fair of hair and lithe of limb, graceful in her every movement. And then the Swedish male, a little taller, no less fair, so often of an inquiring mind and practical bent, a stickler for conventional behavior. Always courteous, yet in the Swedish manner, somewhat shy and brief of speech. Well, of course, 
It all depends on what you're after. Hello there. I say, I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. Haven't we met somewhere before? Of course we have. I am Sweden's historic past, her rock carvings, proud relics of her ancient heritage. You must have noticed me on the mighty rock faces of Bohuslän, where I was carved indelibly between three and four thousand years ago. That's my wife on the left. In those days, they did their hunting on land. But 2,000 years later, they were called Vikings and went farther afield. They crossed the seas in uncomfortable open galleys and got extremely wet in the process. Some never came back. Those that did were buried with symbolic dignity and were often allowed to take their weapons and treasures with them to the grave. Their names and deeds were carved in stone Using a peculiar alphabet and rather peculiar letters, they call them runes. Many of these runic stones still stand and show how Christianity first started getting a faint foothold in the barbarous north. In order to help ward off the powers of darkness, they put their faith in stone churches and the sign of the cross. But when it came to dealing with human intruders, they preferred to rely on sharp steel and very thick walls. Hard rock and precious metals, all gouged from the bowels of the earth. Sweden has had miners for centuries, it seems. And so, of course, homes for miners, too. Ancient mining traditions are still kept up. Just like ancient farming traditions, they still take their cattle up to lusher mountain pastures during the summer months, just as they have done since the Middle Ages. Hmm, what about taking a little wooden horse from the province of Dalarna? Born and bred in the traditional heart of Sweden. That's me. You couldn't do better. Sweden's vast timber production goes into the making of little wooden horses. Quite a lot is used for making skis. Everybody skis in Sweden. They even have an extraordinary marathon cross-country amateur skiing race, a national event for old and young alike, over a course almost 60 miles long. But of course, some prefer a more dignified form of locomotion. The 
race is called the Vasa race and is in memory of an athletic and famous king named Gustav Vasa, who made a dramatic escape from his pursuers along the same trail more than 400 years ago. <laughs> All over Sweden, trees keep crashing to the ground. A select few are lucky enough to get propped up again as symbols of midsummer light and festivity. In the meantime, their brothers help swell the lakes and rivers on their way to the sawmills. Bale after bale goes out to a paper-hungry world. Oh, I'm so sorry. I honestly didn't mean to... silver into sleek spoons. Or steel into ship's sides. I suppose it represents some sort of yearning to turn nature's gifts to good advantage. riches from the mountains in the form of solid walls of ore.
riches from the rushing rivers converted into vast sources of latent power. Riches from the soil. In fact, as far as I could see, the Swedes seem to have developed a knack for enjoying their natural riches in a variety of ways. It makes for a high standard of living. Everybody has some sort of vehicle to drive around. I was told that no European country has as many cars per capita as Sweden, and after trying to park your car in Stockholm, you might well believe it. Kungstragolden? No. The general whirl in Stockholm can be rather confusing. No parking in Kungsgatan. Not a hope in the old town. And the king, after all, is entitled to some privacy in his own palace. But just opposite, there's one of these peculiar 20th century gadgets, a parking meter. And then you're all set for a peaceful stroll as a pedestrian. When you consider how the whole of Stockholm is perched on a lot of rocky little islands, you begin to wonder how they ever manage to get along at all. But then Stockholmers have been fairly steady, level-headed people. For the past 700 years or so, they go about their daily lives quite calmly. Somehow, they don't seem to let the organized confusion of a modern metropolis prevent them from thinking quite peaceful thoughts now and then. Swedes have a certain weakness for doing things in the grand, lavish manner. And sometimes the results are highly artistic. Sometimes the accent is on the lavish. Alfred Nobel. The Nobel Prize giving ceremony takes place in Stockholm every year and is an occasion when the interest of the whole world is centered upon the Swedish capital. Few awards for creative scholarship in the interests of mankind have won such a degree of international esteem as the Nobel Prize. Can I help you, sir? Well, I, I just wanted a souvenir. I've been looking around while you were... Uh, but, you see, I've traveled practically all over Sweden, and I've sort of lost my heart to, to everything. In fact, that's just about the only thing that would symbolize what I've left behind me. Well, it's yours. That's terribly... 
But I don't see how I can really accept. Of course you can. I hardly know what to say. Talk. 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 What a fool I was. How could I have forgotten one of the finest little souvenirs there is? That little Swedish word for thank you. Tuck.